I am so glad you dropped by this episode of Media Champions. Hey gang, it's Mary Therese in Atlanta. Today we have Bernard Schroeder on the program from San Diego State University. We like to bring in the subject matter experts who have the expertise to share and boy does he have it. Bernard, welcome to Media Champions. Mary, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. And I I know that your your history is is that you you have been in the thick of the storytelling, the branding, the marketing, and now you work in education at San Diego State. Let's talk about what you do to help students at San Diego State uh, from beginning to end. And it's all about building the business and building the brand. Well, the first thing is um, I've helped build a very good center there and some programs around the campus and that draws students into the center. And from there, the ones that uh, have the aspirations, we try to help them create their company. What surprises you the most from a student that comes in that they, they just know they have this idea that I want to have a company, but they're not quite sure what the next step is. What surprises you the most about what they don't understand? You know, coming out of uh, branding and marketing in New York and Silicon Valley, what surprises me the most is how wide open their unbiased minds are in listening to advice on how they could accomplish what they want to. That's fantastic. That means they're eager and they're and they're listening. That's fantastic because you don't always have that. No, the problem that you know, once people start working and they get out in the world, they form their own biases and opinions. When I get students at nineteen or twenty, um, I can give them the kind of almost Gandalf type of advice that they, as Frodo's, can really, really move forward on. A couple of good examples are uh, helping the early founders of Pure Vita and blenders, both of which are now $100 million companies out in the community. Wow. Love that analogy too. Bernard, coming from where you have in the world of marketing uh, over these many, many years, can we talk about the importance of relationship building? Because you have seen so many things change and the trends change over the years in media and marketing, but it always goes back to the basics with relationship building. Can we talk about the importance of that? You know, it's one of the reasons I wrote one of my books on marketing was I felt digital marketers were not forming relationships with either teammates or clients. Great example is I was helping an agency grow. And one day the, one of the founders said, yeah, we have a meeting with the director of marketing at that company. And I go, that's great. I had lunch with the CEO yesterday. <laughs> Touche, right? No, I mean, they're, they're, they're way too tactical. They want to close a program, and I want to understand the strategy. Yeah, Wait, and let's talk about that because, you, you know, you, you combine the understanding and the education, and I don't care if you're in a classroom talking to students or if somebody has hired you as a, a, a part-time uh, marketing guru, being able to become educated and understand the why and the how is, is what's going to take this brand, this notion, this business, the farthest that it possibly can. Am I right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, the explosion of digital marketing has unfortunately not allowed young marketers to be classically trained uh, by experienced marketers slash advertisers. And so what happens is these young executives, when they, if they're digital, when they get to about 30, they tend to run out of steam because they don't know how to cross the bridge from being very, very tactical to being strategic. Do you think, Bernard, that there are things out there today that are just kind of flash in the pan, if you will, when it comes to storytelling, media marketing? What, what do you think are, are the flash in the pan things that, that maybe we shouldn't be paying as much attention to or that much noise? Or what should we be paying attention to that we're not? Well, you know, great question. I mean, if you see what's going on right now, um, people can't tell if it's going to be a recession or it's not going to be a recession. We know it's an economic slowdown. You can just see the numbers. Um, I advised one agency about four months ago, rapid growth, approaching 100 million, uh, 60 to 70 percent of their revenue was media based. And I said, you better scale that back to under 50 and bring in services you know, whether that's retargeting, email, events, I don't care what it is because people are going to be pulling back on media. And they don't see that. They don't see it until it's too late sometimes. And so 
You know, right now, if you're not focused on driving profit, I don't care what you're doing at your company. I don't care what kind of company you have. If you're not focused on either driving revenue or profit, everything else is almost a waste of time. It, the sage, sage, sage advice. Bernard, we're out of time, but thank you. And and I told you before we got started, I already know I want you to come back and continue the discussion. Is that okay? That's fine. I enjoyed it. I did too. Thank you so much. And for the rest of you, you're definitely going to want to pick Bernard's brain and we can do that. We can make the connect to him for you. You can find him by finding us here at dailyadbrief.com. I'm Mary Trace Griffin in Atlanta. We'll see you next time for more Media Champions. Simplify presents Addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's Addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's Addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.